okay, what the hell is going on? Because it seems like the NBA trade deadline just doesn't like seeing me with an average blood pressure. As we got a couple more updates on two of the biggest players in the buyout market in LaMarcus Aldridge and Andre Drummond. And while some people feel like Andre Drummond's destination is already set in stone, with the way LaMarcus Aldridge decided to pick his, only God knows where Andre Drummond's going to decide he's going to go. So let's get started. But before we get into this, hi, I'm FLB. I'm a big basketball fan and I make basketball videos here on YouTube. So if any of those topics interest you, hit that sub button. It's the best way to help the channel grow. I make a couple videos a week, two to three, and I'd love to have you back here. So as early as about yesterday this time, Andre Wojnarowski tweeted out that LaMarcus Aldridge plans on signing with the Brooklyn Nets. And as a Heat fan, this had me screaming across my room. As from his previous tweets, a lot of Heat fans, including myself, felt like it was already set in stone that LaMarcus Audrey would be filling in the vacancy we have at our power forward spot, which would probably put us as probably one of the top three teams to come out of the East with a starting lineup of Victor Oladipo, Duncan Robinson, Jimmy Butler, LaMarcus Audrey, and Bam Adebayo. But the Brooklyn Nets decided to have other ideas as they decided to make themselves even more unstoppable on offense. As with aligning LaMarcus Aldridge, I feel like they've completely decided to have Blake Griffin come off the bench. But like every one of their other pickups, LaMarcus Aldridge is nowhere near the defensive player to make any difference for them on that end, which is their biggest weakness. So I feel like they're really just buying into the no one can outscore us narrative, which I guess is okay because it is kind of true. But the saying defense wins championships isn't a, some old phrase that every coach or old head decides to say to slander the defense in this era of basketball. It actually has some weight to it. So it would be really intriguing to see how well they handle this, which already scares me considering that James Harden has thrusted himself in the MVP conversation as he's keeping the next afloat basically by himself as kd has been out for a long period of time and sometimes he's even without Kyrie. So with the new addition, the Brooklyn Nets become more dangerous in offense while still probably being the same defensive team, maybe even worse. So whatever, I'm not mad. It's not like this is karma for us bullying the Houston Rockets into giving us Victor Oladipo for literally nothing. And what's made this even worse is they still have one more roster spot. Yeah, they do. And I think personally, I am ecstatic that the next guy I'm about to talk about did not take a meeting with them at all. Now, unlike LaMarcus Aldridge, Andre Drummond has said to be taking a nice long time on evaluating all the places and teams that um, are after his services. Teams including the New York Knicks, Los Angeles Lakers, Los Angeles Clippers, Boston Celtics, and Charlotte Hornets. And unlike LaMarcus, um, Andre Drummond isn't some old guy looking to chase a ring. He's only 27 years old. So him fitting with the New York Knicks makes sense as they are an up and coming team and him making a Twin Towers combo with Julius Randle would be probably fun to watch. But Andre Drummond is also known as the poster boy for empty stats in the NBA as he can easily give you a 2020 game with his team still losing by about 30. And the same thing rings out for the Charlotte Hornets as a team that as young as them with LaMelo Ball, Telly Rogier, and all their other rookies and young guys. I don't see the positives in getting an Andre Drummond. His age doesn't fit with their timeline as there won't be a contender for another couple of years. They need to fill out and learn how to play together and get a couple more pieces. But a team of the Boston Celtics completely makes sense as this season they've completely underachieved and their largest vacancy is at the center position, somebody that can rebound and protect the rim. And Andre Drummond could fit both those roles and help out Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown on both ends of the ball. But I think the only teams that do really have a chance at grabbing him are the Lakers and the Clippers. The Lakers right now losing JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard in last year's offseason has had a big vacancy at the center position. And with LeBron and AD out, they could really use someone to help them stay afloat a little more until they get back in the rotation. And in the playoffs, having Andre Drummond next to Anthony Davis could really help open Anthony Davis' perimeter game as now they have somebody else that can rebound and protect the rim. And the same thing goes for the Clippers as they have a vacancy at the center spot as they have Serge Ibaka there right now and Ivanka Zubox coming off the bench. So he would provide a nice boost for them in the same way he would the Lakers with rebounding and rim protection. But I guess we have to wait and see what his decision is. 
Never mind, we don't have to wait for his decision as Adrian Wojnarowski just tweeted out that after clearing waivers at about 5 p.m. today, Andre Drummond plans to sign with the Los Angeles Lakers. So now I feel like all the big moves are already over. Marcus Aldridge has decided to sign with the Brooklyn Nets. Mm -hmm. And Andre Drummond has decided to sign with the Los Angeles Lakers. And to be completely honest with you, I don't fear any of these teams like I did the Warriors or the Cavs back then. I still feel like it's pretty open with all the injuries and with how little time they've all had to play together. The Lakers last year were a way more cohesive unit and would provide way more trouble than this Lakers team this year would. And the Brooklyn Nets have had no cohesion at all this season and their defense is completely atrocious. So while it may be a cold day in hell when they have a bad offensive night, the defense will normally be pretty bad. And I feel like I could definitely count on coaches like Eric Spolcher and Brad Stevens to maybe not win, but very much keep it interesting. And if certain things go their way, we may be looking at a couple upsets. So this all boils down to a pretty eventful trade deadline. I think I read a tweet somewhere saying that this is the most players ever moved in a trade deadline. So it was pretty interesting. As a Heat fan, I can't be too mad. We did come away as bandits in one trade and LaMarcus Aldridge may have been the cherry on top, but you know, not too mad. And for Laker fans that already set in stone that they may make the finals, you may need to be a little scared because a team with that many offensive weapons and with the Lakers not being able to play as much together and have a cohesive defense, it's going to be really hard to put that team down. But unlike other years, not impossible. So with that being said, this has been FLB. That's my time. And I'm out. Ain't no slow ground to cool me to OT Need a Chaloma, I need a Karushi Bustin' for me like my name is Obuzi Faded in the boo, my jelly on duty Eki my show, spit on the beat like it's fully out of I've been to V, coppin' from Cleese Then I go roll me a Fronto Pieces you can never cop That new fit you flexin' pop Bitch, I'm cookin' up like I know my nigga